Hello everyone, welcome to the day 3. In this video we are going to cover recursive functions in Python. So what is recursive function in Python? Recursive function in Python are functions that call themselves within their own definition. It means that when we define a function and when we call the function inside the inside that function, then that function call itself again and again. So we don't need to call it or we don't need to uh, use a loop. The function will, uh, will call itself again and again for performing that program. Now, there are two components for the recursive functions. Uh, the first one is the base case, uh, which is used to determine the terminating conditions. So, where to stop the uh, recursive function. And the second one is the recursive case. Uh, now, the recursive case call itself again and again with the modified parameters. Now, uh, we'll understand this with a simple example that that is, we'll make a program for factorials using the recursive functions. So first, we'll do what? First, we'll write the, we use the def keyword for defining the function and then we'll give the name of our function that is factorial and then we'll pass a parameter n for number and then we'll check that if n is equal to 0 then do what then return 0 and we'll give one more condition that if n is equal to 1 then return 1 because we know that the factorial of 1 is 1 so first i'll tell you what is factorial uh, if somebody asks that what is factorial so factorial is uh, what happens when we call the factorial of 4 so it will basically happen what that 4 will get multiplied with 3 then 3 will get multiplied with 2 and this will happen till the number reaches 1 means the 4 will get multiplied with 4 minus 1 each time uh, until it reaches uh, 1 so 4 will get multiplied with 3 then 2 then 1 and then it will multiplied with 1 it will get a stop so now we'll come back to our code so when n is equal to 1 it will return 1 now in the else part we'll call the recursive function so first uh, we'll return here we'll return n and then we'll multiply n with and then we we'll call our function that is factorial and then we'll give here n minus 1 so what is happening here when we calling or when we writing the factorial n minus 1 what is happening here that if we so first i'll print the result then i'll show you what is happening so we'll call our function and then we'll give a number 4 and then we'll print now you can see the answer is so i'll clear this and then we'll see the answer is 24 so how the 24 comes now i'll show you how it has come first we have given 4 here now 4 goes here now the condition getting checked so if it is checking for 0 no it is not 0 so it will check for 1 no it is not 1 so it will come here now 4 is being stored here now 4 will get multiplied with this uh, inside this function n minus 1 means 4 will get minus with 4 minus 1 and it will become 3 and 3 will get multiplied with this 4 and it will become 12 now it will remain here this 12 is remaining here now what is happening now 3 will go there in the first line now it will check for 3 so it is also true now it will check for 3 that it is if it is equal to 1 so this is also false so it will come here in the else part and then here is already 12 now what happened 12 will uh, remain here and then the 3 will come here and then 3 will get minus 1 and it will become 2 now 2 will get multiplied with this uh, get multiplied with this 12 and it will become 24 now now it becomes 2 here now this 2 will go here then it will again check for 0 then we will check for 1 then it will come in the else part now it is 24 now this n is 24 here now it will go here and then 2 minus 1 will happen then the 
our answer will be 1. Now 1 will get multiplied by 24 and it will remain 24. Now this 1 will go again here. Now it will check for 0. So it is not 0. Now it check for 1. Now it is 1. So our program gets terminated here. Now 1 is here. Now 1 will be returned and our answer 24 will come here. And this time it will not reach till else. If certainly it, uh, if there was any chance that if it was also correct incorrect means if it remains false then then again this else part will be executed so i hope you have understand now we'll see with one more example so that we'll understand more efficiently so we'll write our question so basically what we'll do we'll calculate the sum of numbers present in a list so for that what we'll we'll do we'll just simply create a function for sum all elements all elements then we'll give a parameter n for number now what we'll do we'll do here if now we'll check that if length of n means n is a uh, n is a list all the numbers will get inside uh, get will get stored inside n now if the length of n is equal to equal to 1 so what will happen will return will return n at the number present at the zero index means the number present at the first place now in the else part we'll do what we just simply we have to sum it so what we'll do we'll we'll return we'll return n then we'll do plus and then we'll call our function that is sum all elements and then inside that function we'll do we'll call the parameter n and then we'll give that n is a list so for that we'll use the square braces and here we have to give n zero because we 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 want to plus the numbers present inside n means the numbers present inside the list n so we'll give a one this now what is what does this line means now this is returning the return statement is returning something now it is returning this now what does this means it means the number at first place the number at zero index the num uh, the numbers present in the list n so inside the list n the number present at zero index will get plus with will get ad added with and now we are calling our function sum underscore all underscore elements and then we are giving our list that is n and now inside the square braces what we are trying to say that starting from one means the number zero is already getting added to all the numbers so we don't need to add zero again so what we'll do we'll start from one and now un now how many numbers you want to give inside the n it will add all the numbers so we have leaving it blank so that it will take the value uh, infinite so how many numbers are present in our list it will take all the numbers now we'll just simply call our function that is sum all elements and then inside the function now if we'll write the numbers here it will occur an error because we have to put it inside a list because we have given only one parameter n and inside and now n is a list so we have to store the number inside n so for that we use the square braces and now we'll give our number so suppose i want to make sum of 12 plus 12 plus 50 so what will happen there are three uh, numbers present inside the list and now if we'll sum this the answer will be 74 as you can see as 12 and plus 12 is 24 and 24 get plus with 50 it will become 74 so you can see the answer is 24 now you can give as much as number you want and it will add all of them and we'll run it again you'll see the answer is 323 so i hope you have understand this 
that what is happening here this function is calling itself for all the elements again and again and then when and then the uh, all the sum happens it is getting printed here so i hope you understand so thanks for watching the video